So he discovered oxygen in a lab, where we have this, obviously not very far away from here. Now, somebody discovered oxygen before him, a gentleman called Anton de Rossier. He did not release really anything, in fact, he did write up his notes. But Joseph Priestley was credited with the discovery because he wrote up the notes. A hundred and six years after that discovery, a couple of brothers from Arthur and Leon Brin take out paintings for processing and separated oxygen from the atmosphere. Very shortly after that, this, their, their company, which was called Brin's Oxygen Company, was renamed to British Oxygen Company. Uh, at the same time, early 1900s, an engineer called Carl Van Lindy worked on a system for large, mass-producing, basically, oxygen for storage and separating from the atmosphere. Carl Van Lindy, his company, and POC joint forces to become the Lindy Group. Today, we are based in 70 countries. We supply more than 100 countries, and last year's turnover was 17 billion euros from a spindle full of oxygen back in 1774. So, massive business. So some of the gas products that we have, we're just going to talk about a very few, few of them today. And some of the demonstrations are showing some of those gases. But this is the interactive bit, this is where you get involved. So if you can imagine this room burning down all those gases inside, we've got lots of different gases. Focus on the main four. Does anybody know what they are? Yes. Nitrogen, yeah, you know what it's Or near 78%. So, what's the next biggest? Yes. Oxygen, yeah, percentage? Yeah, just under 20.8%. What's the next biggest? We're talking less than less than 1% of the atmosphere now, yes. Uh, no, that's one of them, but it's less than that. That's smaller than the car, which is the next biggest. Uh, I was oh, yes, it is. And then you've got CO2. So, those gases in that environment, there's other trace gases as well. Uh, xenon, krypton, neon, uh, helium, methane, all sorts of very, very small parts of ammonia in the atmosphere. So that gas, you can see it's you can't see it, smell it, taste it, but how did you get it into something that you can't see? Anybody, anybody know? You know, you can't know. Sorry? Correct, you know. Anybody else? Yes? Sorry? Is it blue? No? Just, you have to separate it from the atmosphere. Well, no, you can see it's not the same thing. Pressurized elements of it, that does help with the quality of the key thing. It's cooling. So you cool the air out. At different temperatures, different gases start to separate from the atmosphere. The first one being oxygen, at around about minus 183 degrees. So very, very cold. So the gas that you can see small the face, just under 21% of the atmosphere, will turn to a pure blue coloured liquid at minus 183 degrees. If you cool the air down even further, you get to minus 186 degrees, our will separate from the atmosphere and become a pure colourless, odourless liquid. Cool even further, minus 195.8, let's say minus 196. Minus 196 degrees, nitrogen, 78% of the atmosphere, will go from a liquid, sorry, from a gas that you can't see from solid base into a liquid that you can't see. And I've got some of these today to show you.